All right, so now we'll add uh, two more rules, two more uh, basic or non-derived rules, and these are the rules for for working with disjunctions. So disjunction introduction and disjunction elimination. All right, so the first rule, uh, disjunction introduction, is fairly straightforward. And what it tells us is that uh, we can, from any proposition A, we can infer a disjunction of that proposition with any other proposition B. So symbolically, we can go either from A to A or B. We can infer A or B from A. Or also, we can infer the logically equivalent expression B or A. So from A, we can infer A or B. And from A, we can infer B or A. Now, this is a kind of a strange rule. It feels sort of like magic, but it really follows uh, directly from the truth table. The truth table for disjunction tells us that a disjunction is true as long as one of the disjuncts is true. So A or B is true if A is true or if B is true. You don't need them both to be true. So this means that as long as some proposition A is given as true, then the disjunction of A and any other proposition must also be true. So what feels weird about it is that you can just add anything at all, but uh, since A is given as true, that's just the nature of the disjunction. So Melvin is a moocher. If that's given, it logically implies that Melvin is a moocher or uh, my mom is Kanye West. So we could do a little proof with or introduction. Let's do uh, let's do this one. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do this on your own. So if P then Q, P and R entails Q and R or S. All right, so as always, you want to think uh, backwards from the conclusion. So you're trying to prove that Q and R or S. Now, none of these occur over here exactly, uh, but you can see that uh, if you get P on a line by itself, which you can do through and elimination, you can get Q through conditional elimination. And if you can get Q, then if you put R on a line by itself through and elimination, you can get Q, Q and R. And finally, if you have Q and R, you can use our new rule just to add in S by or introduction. Okay, so this proof looks like is you go P by two and and elimination, Q by one and three, conditional elimination, if P then Q, P, therefore Q. And then you have to put R on a line by itself. You could have done P and R uh, right in a row. You could have gone P, uh, 3P, 4R. Uh, the order here wouldn't matter. But you do need to get R by itself on a line, uh, which again is just from 2 and and elimination. And then you just put them together. You got Q and R by 4, 5, and introduction. And then just add in with our new rule, Q and R or S by or introduction. Okay, so that's our little proof involving or introduction. Now, or or disjunction elimination is a little more complicated, but not that bad. So disjunction elimination is one of the more involved rules of our basic non-derived rules. And to understand it, 
you want to think about first is, is this question. How, how could I derive some definite proposition free C, C from a disjunction like A or B? Now you got to remember this is in the meta language, so A could be anything, B could be anything, C could be anything. Well, if you think about the truth table for disjunction, you'll remember that a disjunction like A or B is true when one or the other disjuncts is true. So if you're told that A or B is true, what do you know? Well, you know that A is true or that B is true, or possibly that they're both true. That's all you know. You can't, you can't assume from the truth of A or B that A is true. You can't assume from the truth of A or B that B is true. You can only assume, you can only, you only know that one or the other is true. So what that means is that if you're going to derive something definite like C from A or B, you would have to show that A implies C and also that B implies C. In other words, you have to cover all your bases. You don't know which one of these is true. Could be A, could be B. So if A or B is going to actually deductively imply something specific, it's going to have to follow from both A and B independently. That's the rationale behind disjunction elimination. So that's what the rule says. If you have A or B, and you have somehow if A then C, and you also have if B then C, then you can conclude C by or elimination. Now there's notice that there's three lines. Right? There's three lines, the original disjunction, and the two conditionals. And so that means you're going to cite three lines in your justification. The disjunction first, and then the two conditionals afterwards. I think that's pretty clear, but we could think about it in purely in English again. Um, so either Alvin or Bruce is driving. If Alvin's driving, then we're going to be late because, say, he just drives super slow. If Bruce is driving, then we're going to be late as well because, say, Bruce doesn't know the way. Well, what does that mean? What can we, what can we derive from this? Either way, we're going to be late, right? So the reason we can say we're going to be late for sure is because we've proved, we've given a reason for thinking that it's true in either case. So once again, A or B, Alvin's driving or Bruce is driving. If Alvin, we're going to be late. If Bruce, we're going to be late. So, heck, we're going to be late. All right. So let's do it. The simplest or elimination proof on the books. P or Q, if P then S, if Q then S, therefore S. It doesn't get any easier than this because there's only three assumptions and you need three assumptions. So that's the proof. P or Q on line one, if P then S, if Q then S, and those are exactly the conditional conditionals we need to demonstrate that S. So if P or Q, if P then S, if Q then S, so we can conclude immediately that S by one, two, and three for elimination, for disjunction elimination, notice that the first line cited is the disjunction. Okay? Now a little bit less trivial example. Go ahead and work this one yourself, of course.
So we're told to demonstrate M or N, M or N, and thinking backwards again, we look and see like, how could we get M or N? Well, there's M here and M here. There's no N anywhere. So it looks like, you might say, it looks like we're gonna be adding N in, right? through or introduction. So focus on getting M. How would you get M? Well, if you had Q, you could get M. Also, if you had R, you could get M by conditional elimination. Well, you don't have either of those there. You do however, have if P then Q or R. And now, oh, that's interesting, right? Look, looks like or elimination could figure in. If I had Q or R, then because I have if Q then M and if R then M, I could write down M by or elimination. Q or R, if Q then M, if R then M, implies M by or elimination, and then I get M or N by or introduction. So then the question is, how can I get Q or R? Well, the only way to get Q or R would be to get P. Can I get P? Yeah, it's right there. All right, so we got it. And it really, it really is important to just think backwards because if you just start uh, generating uh, things you can do. It might, it might work sometimes, but as the proofs get more complicated, there's so many different things you can do that it ends up, uh, you end up doing a lot of really unproductive stuff. All right. So let's go ahead and get P by two and and elimination, which as we said, will give us Q or R by one and five, conditional elimination, Q or R along with three and four, right? So six, three and four, give us M by uh, our new rule of disjunction elimination. And then we just tack on N by disjunction introduction on line seven. Okay. Here's one more example of uh, disjunction elimination. See if you can do this one. So again, we're asked to prove a disjunction. And if we thought the way we did before, we might say, well, maybe we can definitely get M or definitely get N and just uh, add the other, add the other one in. But, hmm, it's not clear how to do that because uh, it's not clear that we could get M or N. Uh, what we do see though is that the actually the whole disjunction exists in two different places. And again, that makes it look like we could get it through get the actual disjunction through a disjunction elimination. So you got S or Q right here, right? And there's Q and there's S. So if we could get if Q then M or N on a line, and if S then M or N on a line, and S or Q on a line, we'd be done. Can we do that? Well, yeah, it looks like we can, right? Because it looks like we've got 
This is just an AND elimination, so we can get if Q then M or N. Uh, we can eliminate P and get F, if S then M or N by uh, conditional elimination, right? And then uh, we can get S or Q on a line by AND elimination. So it looks like we can do this. So line four, let's go ahead and just put P down there. One and AND elimination. And because we have P now, we can get if S then M or N, right? by 2, 4, conditional elimination. So that's one of them. That's if S, then M or N. Then we can write down if Q, then M or N, by 1 and AND elimination. Of course, you could have done that earlier. AND elimination, you could do that any time. And so what do we have? We have if S then M or N, we have if Q then M or N. So now what we want is S or Q, which we can get again by three and and elimination. And since we now have S or Q, if S then M or N, if Q then M or N, we can finish our proof by just writing M or N by 7, 5, and 6, or elimination, disjunction elimination. Okay. All right, so later on, the, the use of or elimination will become quite a bit more interesting, and uh, that's because when we develop more of our resources, our proof resources, we'll actually be able to construct to the conditionals that we use. So they, they just won't be... Uh, sitting there for us to use, but we'll have to figure out how to make the conditionals required for the OR elimination, and that, that gets quite a bit more fun. All right, so let's go ahead and consolidate our uh, understanding of the rules we know so far with some study questions. So here we go.